a tragedy beyond comprehension. That is how the boss of the world football has described the crush at a match in Indonesia that has killed at least 125 people. It's thought to be the deadliest stadium disaster in more than half a century. FIFA president Gianni Infantino said his thoughts were with the families of the victims. It happened in Malang on the island of Java, where fans of a local team ran onto the pitch after they lost against their bitter rivals. Police fired tear gas. As panic spread, thousands surged towards the exits where many suffocated. A warning you might find some of Shelley Phelps' report distressing. Chaos erupted as fans stormed the pitch moments after the final whistle on the match which saw Arima lose at home to Persebaya Serabaya. Players had to be ushered away by security. Police say they started firing tear gas in response to the situation. It was the feeling of disappointment that prompted the supporters to go down to the field to ask the players why they lost the game. That's when the security team moved in for prevention efforts, so they won't get onto the field or interact with the players. During that process, in the prevention effort, tear gas was fired because it had gotten anarchic. They started attacking officers, they damaged cars. The tear gas caused the crowd to surge towards the exit, where many people were crushed. The tragedy is already one of the world's deadliest sporting disasters, and the number of fatalities is rising. Scores of injured people are being treated in nearby hospitals. In a statement, Indonesia's Football Association expressed its deepest condolences for what happened to football lovers in the country. Indonesia's president has ordered the authorities to thoroughly re-evaluate security at football matches. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I regret this tragedy and I hope this is the last tragedy to occur in Indonesian football. We cannot have any more in the future. Sportsmanship, humanity and brotherhood in the nation should be upheld together. The Premier Football League has been ordered to suspend all matches until what happened has been investigated. Shelley Phelps. BBC News. Well, joining me from Bali in Indonesia is uh, Resta Yoro Lunia, Asia reporter for the South China Morning Post. Uh, so many victims. Have they all been identified yet, Resti? The police said that dozens of bodies are yet to be identified and indicating that they might be teenagers or children because the age limit to get citizenship ID in Indonesia is 17 years old. So uh, it's also quite uh, telling that uh, a lot of uh, teenagers and children are becoming the victims in this tragedy. Sc scores of people in hospital as well, so presumably, unfortunately, the number of dead could well rise. Yes, because we are receiving conflicting reports from the police and also the local institutions, including the search and rescue agency, because the police so far has said that officially uh, 129 people killed, but we are also receiving reports from the search and rescue agency that at least 174 or 182 uh, victims um, in this tragedy. Pitch invasions, football violence, not uncommon in, in Indonesia, but is it uncommon for police to use tear gas and fire it inside the stadium? It is rare that the police actually disperse the crowd inside the stadium using tear gas, but um, somehow it's not shocking for a lot of Indonesians because we often see the police uh, heavy handed approach uh, to disperse the crowd during riots, um, during protests, uh, especially in Jakarta and other big cities, they quick to use uh, tear gas, but it is very rare to the, for them to use uh, tear gas inside the stadium. Normally, like when there's riot during football matches, they use tear gas outside of the stadium. So everybody was taken aback by this uh, heavy handed approach by the police. Yeah, I, I was reading, actually, I didn't know this beforehand, that FIFA rules regulate that police in attendance must not carry tear gas or indeed firearms. So this is flouting the FIFA rules themselves. One is, other issue, though, is that it seems that three or four thousand more people were allowed into the stadium beyond its, its capacity. What is being said about that? 
there are criticism about that because um, normally during the night matches on the Premier League, um, they don't um, broadcast it um, for uh, TV or like they wouldn't allow like audience, especially during um, high rivalry matches like Arema versus Persebaya, which are, um, you know, first uh, rivals. So everybody criticized that they actually allowed more people and they actually broadcast it. Um, it's all for TV ratings. So it's also like a one question that they will have to answer during investigation.